Thanks for staying with us at STL Live. I'm Sarah Bernard, and my guest is Virginia Bush of the Endangered Wolf Center in Eureka. We've been um, visiting the last segment and had some special animal friends uh, who came from the center with you, <laughs> travel with you. So, and we have another friend coming out in a moment. Um, lucky, lucky the wolf will be joining us in just a couple minutes as he gets more comfortable to come on out. So. So, um, Ginny, we were, we've been talking about all the great things at the, um, the, the St. Louis's best kept secret. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to be a secret, the Endangered Wolf Center. Um, and you guys have um, summer camps, and right now we're in February. It's a great time to start thinking about signing up. Right? Exactly. I think February is Sign Your Child Up for Camp Month, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's a great opportunity. We have camps all the way from, I think they start at six years old, all the way to 18 when, when our junior volunteers start career camps and then in between. I'd say that sweet spot for our kids is like eight, nine, and 10. They love it. They're getting outside, they're experiencing nature. Um, the, the kids get to go on hikes, they get to go experience a cave, and they get to, of course, see all of our animals. Every single day is featured, I think, in a different animal and a different ecosystem. So one day they may learn about painted dogs, another day they may learn about Mexican wolves. And then they incorporate that into their learning and into their study. and doing different creek opportunities. It's just, my son went through it a couple years ago and came back filthy every day, exhausted, and it's the best thing you want as a mom. Absolutely, yeah, for kids to get out, you know, especially the kids who live in the city and don't get out to nature as often as they might like, it's a great opportunity. So is it an all-day camp? It's an all-day camp, yeah, mm -hmm. from nine till three, I believe, with aftercare if you want it. Okay. And of course, they get to meet our animals, and it is just so much fun, and just what you said, getting back into nature, we're losing that. We want our kids to have that stimulation outside. And the kids are, I learned this with my children, they are never bored outside. Nope, there could be right. nothing planned and just get outside, they'll figure it out. Exactly. They'll find things to do, which is really great. But I want you to see one of, so special. We have an animal ambassador that no one has. She is it. Um, Lucky is one of our, our main wolves. Is she coming? And she's and gonna she... come out. Of course, now she's like, I'm stuck she's in there, shy. I don't wanna come out. But yeah. she uh, came to us from Zoo Boise when she was just a couple weeks old. Her mom wouldn't accept her. And so they asked the Endangered Wolf Center to hand raise her. And, and then hopefully have her breed later on in life, but use her in education. And that's part of our mission at the center. Come here, Lux. Come on, come on, girl. Oh, here's, oh, she's here she big. comes. So they call them the fox and on stilts, she's, and she's going to come in in just a minute. <laughs> she is now probably close to 50 pounds. There she is. Freaking, there she is. Okay, good. Look <laughs> at her. How do you see her? Oh yes, she had those long legs. And then she's going to check out her honey there. She's got some honey and mealworms. Big ears, big long legs. She's called a maned wolf because she's got that mane right around her back, just like a lion. Uh, and they are from South America. They're neither a fox nor a wolf, which is really interesting. They're in their own genus species, most closely related to bush dogs. Um, we don't know too much about them. We know that habitat destruction is really the key that's, that is uh, oh, reducing their numbers. <laughs> there she goes, but she may come back. Come hey, Lucky. Back. She's exploring Lucky. our set. Lucky, come here. Come on, Lux, come on, Lux, come on. Here she comes back. Come on up. She's like, oh, that's slippery. So we take her to schools. Uh, we take her out, you know, about to the public. Hi, girl. Oh, look, she says hi. So <laughs> what was really fun for me uh, is we got to help hand raise her. So she <laughs> she's rambunctious like a puppy. Yeah, she is. So you can look at her. Oh, and she makes. Oh, thank you. She says, pet me. Pet she squeaks. Me. She's squeaking. She. You can give her a good rub. Okay, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I had the snake in the last segment. You're I'm, so good. I'm, I'm more afraid of this big animal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but habitat destruction is really big for them. And what we like to do at the center is talk about how can you be a good environmental steward, whether that's through recycling or conserving water when you turning it off when you brush your teeth. Um, you know, down to things like giving to the Endangered Wolf Center or there giving to goes. another yeah. international conservation organization. Um, but every animal is part of an ecosystem and every piece of that puzzle matters mm -hmm. and so when you take that animal out when you take that species out especially an animal that's a predator like a wolf it really makes a big difference in the environment and that in turn reflects how we live in our in our even in cities uh, in a healthy environment <laughs> so look at her she's like this is great i get to get in there and i get to show people <laughs> do i smell good she smells a little bit like so a skunk how, how old is lucky <laughs> <laughs> he's not even a year old. Uh, yeah, so he, she's she's in training and she's learning. She, you know what? She smells Daisy on me. Oh, so and she we smells had Daisy the, in the fennec last fox summer, on me. Yeah, and fox. she <laughs> that's a little enriching for her because she smells another animal. <laughs> now, would she eat Daisy? 
<laughs> well, of course, they probably don't mix because Daisy's so much smaller than she is, and of course, she's a predator. They, in the wild, they eat birds, they eat voles, they eat um, all kinds of things. But what's interesting about um, Maine voles is that they are omnivores, so they eat fruit. 50% of their diet in the wild is made up of fruit, okay. uh, something that looks kind of like a tomato. Mm -hmm. And it has this cool symbiotic relationship because when they eat that, they don't get this tapeworm that is actually pretty unhealthy for them in the wild. They are hunted in the wild because they are known to uh, sometimes go in chicken coops. So there's human wildlife conflict issues okay. with, in general with lots of predators. Mm -hmm. And again, they also think um, in certain medicine that their eyes are like a talisman. And so the, the local community will sometimes hunt them for that. And again, it's all about debunking those myths. Right. That those things really aren't the case. We, we appreciate them alive and well out in the wild. Yeah, well, Jenny, mm -hmm. thank you so much for thank coming you. in. Um, the camps, camp sign up mm -hmm. is now at the Endangered Wolf Center, so on your website. Yes. Um, you can visit the website mm -hmm. at endangeredwolfcenter.org to keep up with the conservation work of the program, the things that they're doing, and also to sign up for summer camp this summer. It's, it's starting now. So there's more STL Live after this. Please stay with us.